Hello again for another Touch Designer tutorial. This time you will learn how to create this fun audio reactive dance installation. It works with live Kinect input, but you can also use pre rendered videos or whatever for stuff you create in Touch Designer. It's just important to remove the background, so only your desired object is popping out of the lines. As always, I give a quick overview over the network first. Let's go! Here we just have our Kinect or video input, give it some color and fit it into the right format for our lines. In green is the area where we displace the lines based on the input in chop operators. Underneath is just a small audio reactive network to extract rhythm and snare data from the music. In blue is the original grid swap. And with the chop to sop, it brings back the chop manipulation into subworld so we can render it. In the end, we just use some simple post effects to add glow. That's it, let's delete everything and start from scratch. Create a grid sop. Set the primitive type to polygon and connectivity to rows. Add a null, add a chop to sop, and just leave it for now. We will come back uh, to this later. Add a null and plug it into a geocomp. Create a fog material, drag it on the geometry and use it as a material. Set the mid and constant color to white. Next, create a render setup. Add a camera, add a render top, set your desired resolution, add an overtop, set the fixed layer to input 1 and also plug in a black constant for a black background. Add a null and activate display flag. Check the aspect ratio of your render by middle mouse clicking and set the same aspect as translate values for your grid. In my case it's 1.77 to 1. Go to the camera and adjust the camera position so it fills your render screen. I will leave some space around the grid so I can see when the outside lines bend outwards. I think that looks pretty cool. Next, create a constant shop with two channels, name them rows Y and columns X. Set it to 100 rows and 200 columns. Drag and drop the chop data onto the grid rows and columns parameter. We will use these parameters for more operators later. This way we can adjust the number and resolution of the lines easily from here. Next step, we prepare our player silhouette coming from the Kinect camera. But you can of course also just use any normal video as an input. But I will use a Kinect here. Okay, add a Kinect top, set it to player index, activate camera remap and mirror. Um, just for information, I play a Kinect recording of me busting out some bad dance moves on a loop here. Um, you can download Kinect Studio to also do that. It really helps. Uh, as no one has to be in front of the camera all the time. Add a transform, just leave it for now. Add a threshold top, set it to smaller than 0.1 and set the pixel format to 8-bit RGBA. So we get transparency behind our silhouette. Add a blur and set the pre-shrink to 2 and filter size to 8. We don't want to lose too much detail here, but just soften the flickering a little bit. If anyone knows how to get a cleaner player index with, with a Kinect, please let me know in the comments. Add a level, set the brightness to 3, add a fit, set fit to fill and use our columns and rows constant as a reference for the resolution. Plug it into an overtop, set fixed layer to 1 and also connect a constant with white, color and alpha 0.25 to it. With this alpha parameter, we can later control the brightness of our background lines. Add a null. Now, we still don't see anything, so let's change that, before we come back to do some more top work. Pull the top stuff far to the left side for now. Add a sop to chop, drag the first null after the grid into it. Add two selects. For one, just choose TY and the other one TX, TZ. Add a merge shop, connect the select shop with TX and TZ channels. Add a null behind the merge. Connect the silhouette null top to a top to chop. Remove the alpha value. 
set under the tab crop to full image. Add a shuffle chop and set to sequence channels by name. Add a null. Plug it also into the merge shop. Now drag the null after the merge shop onto the chop to sop. Add R, G and B under the channel scope. Under attribute scope add the points CD0, CD1 and CD2. We should see now at least the silhouette lines brighter than the other ones. Mm, looks boring, right? That's because we don't displace any of the points of the lines yet. We will do that now by displacing the Y parameter with noise. Here's how it works. Create the noise stop, set the period to 0.5, harmonics to 1 and the offset to 0. Animate the noise under the translate Z axis with apps time.seconds times 0.3. Under the common tab, choose 16 bit flow to make our lines a lot smoother. And reference the columns to the width and the rows to the height. So it has the same size as our grid. Add a multiply. Plug the noise and fit top with our silhouette into multiply. Set fixed layer to 1. That's very important here. Add an eye. Okay, next. Plug the null into a top to chop. We just need one channel here. You can delete the rest. Under crop, choose full image. Add a shuffle top and use under method sequence all channels so we have the same sample length like the other chop data. Add a math behind it, let's leave it for now, and another math. Set combined chops to add. Connect the TY select chop to the second math and plug it into the merge. You should see a very displaced silhouette now. If not, change the input order on the math too. Let's turn the displacement down to 0.1 or 0.2 on the multiply parameter of math1 so it isn't overly displaced. Alright, as you can see now, the lines get displaced by the Kinect input without losing their connection. It's not just something we add on top of the lines, we manipulate the lines geometry. Let's add some color and glow to our silhouette. Insert the multiply top after blur one. Create a ramp top with, for example, purple and blue gradient. For the glow effect later, it's important to choose bright colors. Set extend left to mirror and animate the face with apps time.seconds times 0.1. Connect both the ramp and the Kinect input in the multiply top. Make sure to use input 1 as a fixed layer. For our fog material, create a noise top and reference it as a color map. Set monochrome to off, the period to something like 8 harmonics to 1, and again we will use apps time.seconds times 0.1 to translate the translate Z um, parameter. Nice, let's add some glow by adding the bloom component behind the overtop from the touch designer palette. You can find it under image filters. Set the blur size to 10, threshold to 0.1, intensity to 1, bloom level 1 and glow level to 1. If your glow effect doesn't work so good, try to use brighter colors in the first ramp top that we used to color the silhouette in the beginning. Connect Bloom and the Bloom input to an add. Also add a level and set brightness to 2. You can use the first transform of the Kinect input to increase the size of the silhouette, so it covers the whole width of the lines. That's because of the low resolution of the Kinect player index. Cool, our top network is also done. In this last and simple step, we make the silhouette audio reactive to music by using some music data to trigger our noise top and also a mask chop. Nothing easier than this. Add an audio file in chop and use any audio you want. I will leave the standard touch designer track on here. Add an audio device out chop to hear it. I'll just turn it off for now. 
grabs the audio analysis component from the palette. You can find it under tools. Only activate snare and, ry and rhythm for this example. But of course you can also decide for any other data. From here connect two select drops. For one choose the channel rhythm, for the other one just use the snare. Add a trigger, a math and, an, and a null behind both. For the rhythm trigger set under attack set peak length to zero. Under sustain set the decay length also to zero. Set the math range from 01 to 0.1 and 1. Now reference the drop data to the harmonic gain from the math noise 1. For the snare trigger, set peak length under the tab attack to 0. Under sustain, set the decay length to 0.05 and release length to 0.1. Set the math range from 0, 1 to 0.05 to 0.2. And now just reference the drop data to the multiply of math 1. Cool, you just created a fun installation to project on the wall at your next birthday party. That's it for the tutorial. Show your support by liking my videos and subscribe for more. And I'm also happy for any comments, be it feedback, improvements, suggestions or just a hello from your country. Peace out.